terms of Wi-Fi 6, we're going to break it down into two videos. So in this first video, we're going to look at the key Wi-Fi 6 characteristics and then move on and discuss the new access technology of OFDMA, Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. So let's begin then by first of all taking a look at the key characteristics of Wi-Fi 6. So then, on the table, we can see we can now compare Wi-Fi 6, or 802.11ax, with the legacy technologies of Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5, and in so doing, explain some of the differences. To begin with, the ability now to support the 6 GHz ISM band. We've got the ability to support both uplink and downlink multi-user MIMO. We've got the inclusion of the new access technology, OFDMA. And finally, the new modulation technique, now moving up to 1,024 QAM. OK, so let's just take a look at those then in turn. To begin with then, the new 5 GHz ISM band. Well, clearly we've already seen that Wi-Fi 6 can also support the 20, 40, 80 and 160 MHz wide channels, available in 2.4 and 5 GHz. However, to get more radio spectrum, then we need to move to new areas. And as such, spectrum is now being made available on a global basis at the 6 GHz band. Here we can see on the table the number of additional channels which now become available. Now we should note that across the USA, the full range is currently available. Whereas in Europe, it looks like only the lower frequencies will be initially available for Wi-Fi 6. The other change we mentioned was the change in multi-user MIMO. And the change here now is not only the ability to move up to eight streams, but also to be able to support it on both the downlink and now the uplink. Here we can see the configuration of up to eight individual devices, all transmitting on different streams at the same time. But what we should stress, however, is for multi-user MIMO to get its true benefits then clearly the stations really need to be spatially diverse to get the opportune uh, performance. Having them all next to each other allows it or makes it very difficult to differentiate between the different streams. So in reality, multi-user MIMO certainly gives us benefits, but perhaps not as many as we'd like to think. On this table, we should also note the change in the modulation and coding scheme. Again, the MCS index now ranging between 0 and 11. Fundamentally very similar to those previously mentioned in Wi-Fi 5. However, we've added a further two in the case of 10 and 11. The key thing to point out here now is that we've added a new modulation uh, technique, 1024 QAM. That means the radio wave can exist in 1024 different states and therefore each state change represents 10 bits. We're pushing the data rate still further. However, for this to work, we do need a high quality radio link. Otherwise, there becomes too many errors and it's difficult to differentiate between so many different states. So then, one of the biggest changes introduced with Wi-Fi 6 has been the inclusion of OFDMA, Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. And it's worth pointing out that this particular radio access technique has actually been used in cellular networks for some time. In fact, it forms the basis for our 4G and 5G networks. However, in the case of Wi-Fi, it's only now been introduced for Wi-Fi 6. So let's just take a moment to explain what we mean by OFDMA. On the diagram then, to begin with, let's just see how Wi-Fi 4 and 5 networks, which remember were based on OFDM, in that the neighboring subcarriers were said to be orthogonal and such that they wouldn't cause interference to each other. And on the diagram, we can see that in this situation, these subcarriers are separated by 312.5 kilohertz. Each radio wave changes state, however, every 3.2 microseconds. Remember, it's a change in radio wave that we use for our modulation technique. Each change or each 3.2 microseconds means we can transition from one state to another. If we look at how we've now changed this in the case of Wi-Fi 6, we can see to begin with, we've brought the subcarriers much closer together. In fact, by a factor of four. 
with subcarrier spacing now being set at 78.125 kilohertz. Now at first sight, this may appear that we're going to drive up the amount of data that we can carry because suddenly we have four times as many subcarriers. However, it's worth pointing out that the state in which the radio wave is held, the symbol period as we refer to it, has also increased by a factor of four, now out to 12.8 microseconds. So the net effect is they are basically equal. The benefit, however, to Wi-Fi 6 is that by holding the radio in a state for longer, we have a better chance of successfully the state to decode and therefore which or to enable us to use the higher order modulation techniques. Okay, so let's take a look at these new carrier separation in terms of, to begin with, a 20 megahertz wide channel. So now across the 20 megahertz wide channel, we've got a total of 256 subcarriers. And these subcarriers have been broken down in what we refer to as a resource unit. Here we can see in one configuration made up of a number of 26 subcarrier resource units. However, we could also offer a 52 variant, 106, and finally 242. 242 of the 256 subcarriers being allocated to a particular station. However, if we chose the 26 resource unit configuration, then theory here now, we could actually support up to nine separate stations by allocating each station a different 26 uh, resource unit block. This is now having multi-users onto the Wi-Fi network, but not through streams as we've seen previously. So there on the diagram, we can see the available number of different resource units for us operating on the 20 megahertz wide channel. But as we've previously seen, Wi-Fi 6 can also support a 40, an 80, and a 160 megahertz wide channel. And correspondingly, we can also support a greater number of devices. Theoretically, in the case of 160 megahertz, we could support 74 separate stations simultaneously giving each of them a 26-tone resource unit. Alternatively, we could allocate the entire resource to a single device, clearly sending more data. So let's put that into practice, and you can see hopefully the benefits of transitioning over to an OFDMA-based approach. Once again, let's begin by looking at how it would work on straight OFDM in the case of Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5. Must stress here, however, we are ignoring multi-user MIMO where we can support multiple users by putting them on multiple streams. We can also do this with OFDMA, but as I said, let's just put that to one side for the moment. So on the diagram, we can see we have our available subcarriers, and we can see we have potentially five different stations all wishing to send or receive data across the Wi-Fi network. However, with OFDM, only one station is able to transmit or receive at any particular time. We allocate all of the resources to that given station. So here we can see the blue station, followed by the red station, the green station, the purple station, and finally again, the, uh, the blue station. Key thing to point out here, however, is the wasted spectrum. If the station doesn't wish to send data to occupy the entire capability of the access point, well then that resource can't be given to anybody else. Compare that, however, to OFDMA, supported by Wi-Fi 6. Well, here we can see with the use of these resource units, we can be more effective in the way we allocate the subcarriers. So to begin with, we have two stations using the uh, access point, switching to three, down to a single station, having it in its entirety, to four, and then finally back to two again. So here now, we don't have the wasted spectrum, assuming we have stations out there on the Wi-Fi network actually wishing to send data. Finally, however, we can apply multi-user MIMO in the case of OFDMA, where we would have multiple stations on different streams using sub-carriers of the available resource. Mm -hmm.